Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm just so grateful that Mother Nature decided to keep the clouds away and there is no rain. I want to welcome you and thank you for attending today's rededication ceremony of the Veterans Memorial. Please rise for the posting of the colors by our West Virginia National Guard members. Remain standing as we are led in the Pledge of Allegiance by the Adjutant General, General Hoyer, prayer, and the National Anthem. If you will, bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for another day of life and the many blessings you pour out on our life. As we gather here today to rededicate this memorial, may we remember those who came before us and their valiant efforts in the past, but also the men and women encircling the globe this hour, protecting the freedoms that we hold most dear. God bless our elected leaders. Bless their decisions, bless these ceremonies, and may the decisions they make lead us to the very center of your will. It's in your son's name we pray together. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave please be seated Thank you, Sergeant Humphreys, uh, for that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. Please join me in welcoming to the podium at this time Deputy Secretary Billy Wayne Bailey, who is a Deputy Secretary for the Department of Veterans Assistance. Thank you. Today's my pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin, a native of Logan County, Born and raised in the mountain state of West Virginia, committed to making West Virginia a better place for all of us to live and for generations to come. Since becoming governor in November 2010, Governor Tomlin has worked hard to strengthen our state's workforce, to grow the state's economy, and uh, fight substance abuse amongst our citizens. He has also made veteran acti active military personnel and their families a top priority in his administration. In fact, one of the first things Governor Tomlin did after becoming governor was elevate the Division of Veterans Affairs to the Department of Veterans Assistance, which give every veteran a stronger voice in, our, in the Mountain State. Governor Tomlin's accomplishments, <clears throat> excuse me, are an example for what we can achieve together through hard work and dedication. 
His dedication to veterans is seconded by none in West Virginia. Please join me in welcoming our governor, our friend, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Assistant Secretary Bailey, for that very kind introduction. Uh, and um, for all of you and your team at the Department of Veterans Assistance to support our state's veterans and their families. I'd also like to welcome our President of the Senate, Bill Cole, and Tim Armstead, our Speaker of the House, who are with us today, along with all my Cabinet Secretaries. I believe I saw them all here. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Hardy, it's good to see you. Commissioner Helmick, and of course, it's always good to have with us, and I think we need to give him a big round of applause, Woody Williams, our Medal of Honor winner. Woody. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, since becoming your governor, I've made serving our state's veterans a top priority. Uh, as Billy Wayne said, I first raised the Division of Veterans Assistance to a cabinet level post and established the Veterans Council as well as the Council on the Homeless to help our veterans as they come home. And these milestone changes have and continue to ensure that we best serve our state's veterans, especially those in need. In 2013, I established by spousal military or commission on military spousal licensure to find new ways to assist military spouses moving to West Virginia as they navigate the professional licensure and certification application process to make it easier for those looking for employment to find a job in the Mountain State. In addition, I've worked hard to ensure that our veterans have opportunities to easily transition back into civilian life upon returning home. Our community and technical colleges are providing new opportunities for our men and women in uniform and supporting new training opportunities for our veterans. For example, the Blue Ridge Community and Technical College has developed a new cybersecurity program for our National Guard members. And Mount West Community and Technical College has been recognized as the best two-year college in the nation for veterans by Military Times. With the help of the Higher Ed Policy Commission and the Community and Technical College system, all of our state's four-year and two-year institutions are working together to support student veterans and their families by increasing access and affordability, academic support, enhancing social networks for veterans on campus, and working with community organizations to meet the needs of military service members. Through a partnership with the West Virginia Department of Agriculture and Commissioner Wald Helmick, I've also supported the Veterans, the Veterans of Warriors to Agriculture pro Project. It's the first of its kind that directly assists veterans in using their skills to become agribusiness owners. And the West Virginia program has grown and currently serves as the model program for states all across our country. And uh, Commissioner Helmick, we thank you for your hard work on that. I'm proud of the work that we've done to support our state's veter veterans over the years. And I want to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon as we honor and recognize those in our state who have dedicated their lives to protecting the freedoms that we all enjoy. Now, more than 25 years ago, we took a monumental step forward and began the construction of the West Virginia Veterans Memorial. This memorial was established to provide our residents and our visitors with a constant reminder of the West Virginians who served our nation here at home and abroad, and to memorialize those who lost their lives in the fight for freedom. Our Veterans Memorial recognizes West Virginians who fought in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War and includes statues of men and women from all branches of service, including the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and our National Guard. And today, I'm sure that most of you know this, is the 240th anniversary of the creation of the United States Marine Corps. 
And that's something that was created before the United States became an independent country. So we're very proud of that 240 years of proud service. Now in total, there are more than 11,000 names of West Virginia men and women who died in service to our country carved into these walls behind us. And that we, as we gather today to remember them and pay tribute to their selfless sacrifices. And just, uh, just a few months ago, we completed a complete restoration of the memorial, enhancing its careful features while staying true to the original design and installing new light fixtures to ensure the memorial is illuminated for all to see. And I'm pleased to see the final touches put on this incredible work of remembrance, and I'm thrilled to rededicate this memorial today. With the nation's highest per capita percentage of residents who have served in the military, West Virginians proudly stand ready to answer the call to serve and have defended our country for many generations. Our state is home to the most hardworking and loyal veterans and active duty military in the country. Along with them, strong families who support them. Our veterans and active duty military members have served our state with pride and I'm honored to share today with you. So I want to thank you for all you do to protect us on a daily basis. We are truly grateful for your selfless service and dedication to ensuring our freedom. This Veterans Day, which is tomorrow, I encourage all West Virginians to take time to say thank you to the veterans in your life. Whether a loved one or an acquaintance, the men and women who put service before self are to forever be commended for their bra bravery and patriotism. So thank you to all of our veterans. And we appreciate all of you for being here today as we dedicate the West Virginia Veterans Memorial. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask that everyone please rise. As you saw, the governor and the president and the speaker and members uh, of our cabinet and, and everyone here today, we'd just like to take a moment of silence to remember those who have gone on before us. And after that, we'll have the playing of the taps. So please remain standing. Thank you.
if you will, bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for the dedication of this memorial and the steadfast commitment that this state has put into our veterans and into their support of us. God, as we go from this place and into tomorrow, may we be reminded of those who went before us and those who will come in the succeeding generations that we may always support them and their duties and endeavors. And may those of us who serve always be uh, worthy of being called a member of the United States military. It's in your son's name we pray together. Amen. That concludes today's ceremony, and thank everyone for coming, and have safe travels home.